Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.7, Investigating Diversity from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. This is the last topic in our specification for students taking just the AS level, and it's a nice and short one. So we have to know that genetic diversity within or between species can be made by comparing the frequency of measurable or observable characteristics, the base sequence of DNA, the base sequence of mRNA, as well as the amino acid sequence of proteins encoded by DNA and mRNA. We should be able to interpret data relating to similarities and differences in the base sequence of DNA and the amino acid sequences of proteins, and also be able to appreciate that gene technology has caused a change in the methods of investigating genetic diversity. Finally, we should know how you would collect and then use data in order to investigate variation within a species. Early estimates of genetic diversity were made by looking at the frequency of measurable or observable characteristics. Advances in gene technology have caused this method to be replaced by either the direct study of base sequences of DNA or the direct study of base sequences of mRNA. Alternatively, the study of amino acid sequences of the proteins encoded by DNA and mRNA can also be used to investigate genetic diversity. Note that this is only possible because it is the DNA base sequence which codes for that of mRNA, because remember, mRNA is transcribed using DNA as a template. This mRNA then determines the amino acid sequence. For my video on transcription and translation, just follow the link top right. You can see how closely related two species are by comparing these sequences. You can also use it to investigate diversity within a certain species. This is because individuals of the same species have the same genes but different alleles. However, most variation within a species is due to a combination of both genetic and environmental factors. Note that evolution occurs because of random mutations in genetic material. The more distantly related two species, the more time has elapsed since they had a common ancestor, meaning that there have been more opportunities for mutations to occur. So the process is simple. The more sequence differences, the more distantly related. So for example, when comparing base sequences in DNA or mRNA, the more differences in the base sequence, the more distantly related. When comparing amino acid sequences in proteins, the more differences in the amino acid sequence in a particular protein, the more distantly related. Just to give an example, you could analyze a protein in a cell of a human and then compare this to the same type of protein found in cells of a giraffe to give an indication of how closely related we are to giraffes. The more differences in the amino acid sequence of this protein between the two species, the more distantly related. However, using amino acid sequences to determine how closely related two organisms are does have a few limitations. For example, two species may have the same amino acid sequence, but different DNA base sequences because the genetic code is degenerate. Therefore, protein comparisons are less useful when comparing closely related organisms. Mutations that do change the amino acid sequence must be subtle, as larger changes will greatly change the tertiary structure, meaning that the protein would be dysfunctional. A dysfunctional protein is often a major disadvantage to a cell, meaning that the mutation dies out with the cell. Another disadvantage is that you have to find a protein common to both organisms. And finally, a single protein is only coded for by a single gene, not the whole DNA base sequence in a DNA molecule, so this only gives us an insight into a fraction of the entire genome of an organism. Finally, we need to know how to investigate diversity. An exam question you might be given would be, how would you investigate diversity of a certain trait within a certain species? You would have to state that first, you would take random samples within the population. Then you would collect your data, for example, measure the height of trees in the population, and then calculate the mean. Finally, we would calculate a standard deviation of that mean. 
Note that the standard deviation is a measure of the spread of values about the mean. This only works for continuous variation, which has a numerical value. Continuous variation shows a normal distribution when measuring a given trait within a population. If you have a large standard deviation, there is a large spread about the mean, meaning that we have a large diversity. The smaller the standard deviation, the smaller the diversity. You will not be required to calculate any standard deviations in exams. However, you may be asked to interpret the values of standard deviations. A typical question might be, how would you obtain data in order to investigate variation within a species? You would mention how you would collect the data, calculate a mean, and then calculate a standard deviation, but you wouldn't have to actually calculate any values. I will cover standard deviations in a bit more detail in one of my later videos, as well as things such as the t-test, the chi-square test, and correlation tests. Great, so we've had a look at the different ways of comparing genetic diversity within or between species. We've covered how each of these can be used to determine diversity. We've appreciated that gene technology has caused a change in the methods of investigating genetic diversity. And finally, we've covered how we might be able to investigate variation within a species. That would be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe. If you have any ideas or suggestions, just post them down below. This is the end of the AS part of the AQA A-Level Biology specification. Next time, we'll move on to the A-Level only part, starting with photosynthesis.